All right, welcome back to the next in the protocol video series. Today we're looking at spinal motion restriction algorithm, also known as NSAIDs. This is S104 attachment. This can be found in the skills section of your protocol book. So NSAIDs stands for neurocomplaints, 65 years and older, altered, intoxicated, distracting injury, spinal pain or tenderness. And if any of those are found during your assessment, we should apply or at the very minimum, consider spinal motion restriction, which is the use of an appropriately sized cervical collar on a stretcher while limiting the movement of the spine and maintaining a neutral inline position. Backboard should be limited to extrication whenever possible. Inline stabilization should be maintained with the patient supine and neutral on the gurney during transport. If a patient is not able to tolerate, tolerate the supine position during transport, document the reason and communicate that to the receiving hospital staff. Now, if none of these NSAIDs criteria are met, we can say that spinal motion restriction is not required. Now, there's a second page here. The acronym NSAID should be used to remember the steps in the algorithm. We just talked about it, but this goes into a little bit more detail. Are there any abnormal sensory or motor findings? So remember our PMS checks. This would be a time where if you find any abnormal things within the PMS check, you should highly consider spinal motion restriction. It would then be indicated. Weakness or numbness, complaints or paresthesia. Look for focal deficits such as tingling, reduced strength, numbness in an extremity. 65 is the age greater than or equal to 65 years of age. Those patients have a higher risk for events like car crashes, falls, etc. Altered is the patient oriented to person, place, time, and situation. Is the patient altered in any way? Is there a language barrier? And is the patient cooperative? Which is actually slightly different than the next one, which is intoxication. Is there any indication that the person is impaired from drugs or alcohol? Is there a distracting injury? Basically, is there any other injury which is capable of producing significant pain in the patient, potentially taking away from pain that they would otherwise feel in their neck or back? Spinal exam. Does a patient complain of neck or back pain? Look for point tenderness in any spinal process or spinal process tenderness while you're doing your posterior assessment. Special considerations. Pre-hospital provider assessment will determine what method is needed. Every patient with trauma must receive an assessment. If any assessment component is positive, the patient requires spinal motion restriction. Patients with severe kyphosis or other anatomical or medical conditions may be stabilized using a combination of pillow, blanket, or other devices. Spinal motion restriction should be accomplished using the most appropriate tool for the specific circumstance. These may include, but are not limited to, vacuum splints, pneumatic splints, cervical collars, soft collars, straps, tape, as well as soft materials such as pillows, blankets to minimize movement, compression, or distraction of the spine. Patients with acute or chronic difficulty breathing will use spinal motion restriction with caution in patients presenting with dyspnea and place patient best suited to protect the airway. So that is your spinal motion restriction algorithm, NSAIDs. This is your S104 attachment. You may find this in your skills section of the protocol book. So that's it for this video today. We'll see you guys on the next one.